458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Randy. Randy, good morning. What's on your mind? Well, uh, last November 12, I called in to ask a question, and I kind of got a little derailed there and didn't quite get an answer, but uh, I thought I'd ask it again. Um, I read uh, that at that time, I read an article from the newspaper about how the police are doing their job and apprehending crooks and stuff. Anyway, uh, there's another similar headline from the Wednesday, December 28th. 2011 paper. It says, mail thefts plague state troopers, and says some 150 Fairbanks residents have had mail stolen, according to state troopers, and it says down here, it says, going to be a hundreds of man-hour investigation, but four suspects are believed to be responsible, and three of them were, were in jail. Anyway, another example of uh, the police doing their job, but... Uh, hey, uh, I, I got it. How, how many... Job? Did they say how many uh, hundreds of hours that was going to take? It just simply says, uh, one of the paragraphs says, it's going to be a hundreds of man-hour investigation, he said. So is it going to is it gonna cost more to conduct the investigation than was lost because of the uh, missing mail? I don't know. Because that would be something that would not happen with a free market uh, defense agency. They would never spend more money than they could stand to get back by solving uh, a, uh, a mystery like that. I wonder if it would happen if we had a free market mail industry where we didn't have to use USPS, USPO. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. If, if we uh, could <laughs> well, send your letter with anyone that you wanted to, and you'd be like, well, let's see, am I going to send my letters with the people that get their mail stolen? Yeah. They won't do anything about it, or will? Keep in mind, too, that part of the issue here is that you have to put your mail, if you're going to receive mail from the Postal Service, you have to put it in an approved U.S. Postal Service box. We, I know somebody that just had his box, his personal box, taken down by the post office, and he got a new one put in that was, I think, like half the soft one, and, and obviously not as secure. But And they're also out there on the road instead of up by your house. So, I mean, you know, do your choice. Do it the government's way and have it uh, delivered out there where anybody has access to it in a government-approved box. Is the argument here that um, law enforcement does their job? Is that... Yeah. Uh, well, getting. well, actually, my thing was not really an argument; it was a question. Uh, just, and I'm not trying to get hung up on a particular type of crime. I'm just just pretending some old poor woman gets murdered and bludgeoned and raped and killed or something like that. Uh, I personally believe in number one, government police to conduct the investigation and the apprehension. Number two, I believe in government courts to determine the guilt or innocence of the accused and to. So what did they do? What did they do and before they had law enforcement? Let, let me get to number three. I believe in government prisons to uh, incarcerate the guilty. And what I was going to ask, and I know that Josh and uh, and, and uh, Dave there are not necessarily carbon copies, but kind of directly going to Dave Giesel, who I know whose position on this, you know, you don't want any of those three things I just named. What is your idea? Can you kind of flesh it out? How, you know, there's, we could get rid of the Fairbanks uh, police, city police, and the troopers in the North Pole police, and if, if we did that to sort of uh, descale down government, what's your, what would you put in its place? <laughs> Uh, well, crime would drop dramatically. I mean, uh, something like 91% of people in prison um, are there for victimless crimes. So if you got rid of police putting people in jail for crimes against the state, which have no victim, 91% uh, of the people released from jail, which is almost all of them, would uh, would just go free, and they and they haven't hurt anyone anyway. Yeah, I agree with and you that. so that would that would free up a huge amount of resources. What is it, forty or fifty thousand dollars per person in jail? So the economic conditions in the borough for people exchanging voluntarily and not having guns pointed at them to pay for these police and and jails and courts would go up dramatically. We'd be far wealthier here, and uh, wealthier civilizations have dramatically, dramatically less crime. I mean, look at crime rates in say Singapore versus uh, versus Malaysia. It's night and day. And so your need for all of those things goes down as you have less of them. It's like it creates, you know, more police, more laws, more courts, more jails, actually creates more crime, which creates more need for those things. So if you eliminated them, you'd have an essentially trivial amount of uh, of crime, and then it would be up to neighbors to figure out how to do that themselves through community watch programs and things like that, which they did for years before there was a borough up here. I mean, there's all sorts of books about the uh, mining era up here, which you're free to read. I'm not going to sit here and you know tell you what kind of system of justice is the best one, because I don't know. But uh, miners figured it out up here years ago. I mean, you don't even have to go halfway around the world to find an example. You just have to 
read a little bit of history. I agree with you about lowering the uh, victimless crimes. We don't need victimless crimes. But uh, specifically for Fairbanks, you know, just talking rubber meets the road. And I guess you kind of answered my question. You said you don't know, but uh, Josh, no one, no one knows. Actually, Josh, that's the whole point of putting it out in the market. Is the market would find the most efficient way to allocate resources based on how much people want to spend on security and protection versus how much they want to spend on other things. Right now, they don't even have the choice. How about you, Josh? Uh, are you for getting rid of the Fairbanks City Police and the state troopers and the North Pole Police? Or you di- do you differ from uh, Dave Giesel? Oh, no, I'm all for it. I mean, first getting of all, you have to... Oh, yeah, look at the... Uh, what do you want what, to put in What you're place? asking is, um, what would we do if we didn't have these police? Because, I mean, basically your premise is that we have no crime. Well, you just said, well, what about poor grandma that got killed or this and that? Yeah. Look in the paper. We have lots of police. People are getting yeah. ripped off. I was stolen from here a couple months ago. People are still getting murdered. So what exactly are they doing except for creating revenue for the state? Um, There's obviously, if we didn't have police, there would still be victim crimes. But I think as a society, we could probably take care of them without having the police. I guarantee we could. I mean, because look at history. It's happened all the time. We haven't always had... A hundred and some police officers running around. I don't know how many we have, but you haven't always had state troopers. You haven't always had city cops. You haven't always had county cops. You haven't always had that, and we still survived quite well. And but what they did when they uh, let's go back to the old west, they had a one cell jail. Well, (laughs) and now we have. But you had potheads everywhere. My God, it was terrible. Well, maybe I caught you off guard or something, but so think about it. So maybe next week, come up oh, with I, that. I, I, Randy, have, Randy, we've hey, posted said, ad nauseum on this on the blog. You just um, said you didn't and know. I'm, I'm, What's your answer? I'm no, asking. Randy, Randy, what? that's yeah. the beauty of how many, what should Fred Meyer stock on their shelves, Randy? I don't know the answer to that. Fred Meyer doesn't know the answer to that. It's a dynamic solution because the market is dynamic because people's preferences change constantly. If you try to cram a single answer down 100,000 people's throats, you create 99,999 wrong answers. That is the problem with statism, Randy. You are trying to shove your idea down everyone else's throat. There are no hard answers to most of the questions in society. That's why you, you engage in voluntary action to discover the best answers, because none of us are smart enough to know. Certainly none of us in this radio station here are smart enough. Well, if you're advocating getting rid of the Fairbanks police and the state troopers, surely you can speculate as to a possible answer. For instance, I could do it myself. I could say, if well, I speculated, I would be wrong. Police. I would be incorrect if I speculated. Well, I could throw out an idea. I could start a company and try and compete, and then my customers would guide me in the right direction that I should go. They'd say, no, you're not doing this right. You need to investigate these more. You need to investigate these less. You need to stop macing kids who aren't doing anything, oh. and you need to start going after criminals who have actually injured someone. There would be these forces at play that would actually steer my decisions as a business owner. But I can't just get up here on the radio and say, this is how things should be, because that would make me a politician, and I am no, an anarchist. Make you a I am dictator. against political systems. Okay, you've given me your answer, and that's fair enough, but I, therefore, because you there's have a, no There's answer, a book, Randy. I, I know you like to read. So there's there's police, actually a book where they talk about how this could work. It's well, called The Market for... Say, it's. Hang on, Randy. All right, Randy, you, get a pen. On. It's called The Market for Liberty, and it's by Linda and Morris Tannehill, and they outline how private defense agencies could work. So once again, once again, you got your pen ready because I'm not going to answer this question again until you've read this book, Randy. It's called The Market for Liberty, and it's by Linda and Morris Tannehill. Give that a read and um, call back with this question after you've read it. No. Thanks. I'd like to know what the, what bef- did you drop? Them? No, I haven't dropped them yet. Um, what do you think would happen if they were gone, Randy? Crime would increase, and we'd have a harder time apprehending the criminal. What kind and of we'd crime? We'd have less justice when the criminal, when I get apprehended accidentally by a private uh, renegade society and put in in someone's... uh, Don't we have a renegade society? Do you not know that people get apprehended all the time by the uh, government-instituted police? Yes, and if I got arrested because someone suspected I killed uh, an old lady or something, I would hope for justice and I could prove that I wasn't even there at the scene of the crime and so forth and so on. But if some private agency, some vigilante society apprehended me and then threw me into somebody's private courtroom that uh, populated by who knows what kind of jury and then threw me into a prison in somebody's uh, for pay basement or something in a dungeon, I wouldn't be too comfortable with that. That Unless you could give me a better uh, system and give me some some, uh, some comfort or some... uh, 
You mean like the National Detention Act that we just passed, the National Defense Authorization Act? Is that what you're talking about? I am troubled by that. I am troubled by that. Well, Randy, think think about – I would like to – you're talking about, well, what does this happen? This happens all the time. Do you know Mike Anderson? The guy was thrown in jail for eight freaking months by your system, and he didn't do a dang thing. So what the heck are you talking about? And just because you don't have a police force doesn't mean you can't have a court. Isn't our court system kind of supposed? Court? Doesn't our court system supposed to be of the people, by the people, and for the people? Yeah, what kind Aren't of jurors? Yeah, Aren't jurors about? supposed to be your peers? So what That's makes right. it? Why do you have to have a state instituted government court to have people sit in a jury and say what is right or wrong? So why do you have to have that? Kept on the up and up. That's why. So everything's kept on the up and up. Kept on the up and up when you have a government court system that decides where you have a judge that tells a juror that they cannot judge the law, and you have a judge working for the state, getting paid by the state, and a prosecutor gets paid by the state, the policemen get paid by the state, the defense attorney half the time gets paid by the state, and what does he? What does the judge do? He decides what. Evidence can be shown. He decides what you can say in the courtroom. So where is the justice in that? If you had a free, if you had free people and you had, okay, this guy committed a crime, and you got a jury together, it is quite possible because we are free-thinking individuals. Most of us should be, <laughs> and we should be able to have a court and get together and say, you have done wrong. This is wrong. You don't need the government to decide what's wrong. Randy, I bet I can guarantee you before there was a United States Constitution, murder was wrong. Theft was wrong. Those things have always been wrong. The only thing that the government has instituted is laws that do not harm anyone to get money from them. You think that's why there's 91% of people in jail for state crimes? For state crimes. We have everything that you just said is going on right now because of the state enforcement. The National Detention the National Defense Authorization Act. I'd shorten it up to just the National Detention Act. That's what they do right now, Randy. They just passed the law so they can do that. 